We're interested in how people and animals uh, cooperate, and we're especially interested in how uh, their brains control cooperation. And that turns out to be a really difficult um, problem to study. It's hard enough just to understand how a single animal controls its own behavior, let alone two animals controlling them at the same time. Plain-tailed wrens, the male and female, sing a song that if you were to listen to it, it sounds like a single bird has sung it, but in reality, it's two birds alternating super fast. I mean, it's like the male sings four syllables and the female sings four syllables, and they sing them like this, back and forth between each other, alternating so quickly uh, that it's faster than you can hear. And I can play an example of this, and it'll sound to you like a single bird is singing. We read this paper about um, uh, these special birds, and we found out that they live only on the slopes of the Andes, and only in a small region of the Andes right around the equator. And it turns out we've been traveling there for many years, so we decided to drive up to the side of the volcano um, called Antisana Volcano, and there we found the habitat where they live, which is uh, a type of bamboo called Chasquia bamboo. And there, on our first day, we found hundreds of these birds singing loudly, uh, running around in the bamboo, uh, but we never actually saw any of them. Uh, they're very good at hiding in this dense, dense bamboo habitat. So we spent months, months just trying to understand how the behavior works. Uh, we wanted to know the details, the rules by which these animals cooperate to sing their, their duet song. We did that by placing pairs of microphones out in the field and recording the animals all day as they sang their songs and moved around and defended their territory against other other wrens. And then we brought all of these recordings back to the laboratory where we analyzed them, where we figured out who sang what, how often, what kinds of errors they made. And we also discovered that they sang in ways that we didn't know about before. We found that the males and females were in addition to singing in these duets, they were also singing by themselves. Well, after a lot of work, we finally figured out how to lure them into the nets, and we were able to catch a few of these um, uh, birds, and we were able to study their brains. And we did this by uh, putting them into a sleep-like state, and then measuring the electricity, the activity, in their brains. Uh, after studying their behavior for, for many months, we discovered and were able to describe in detail the rules that they use uh, to cooperate to produce this duet song. And the rules are not so different than rules that we would use in ordinarily da ordinary daily human behaviors, like dancing a dance, like dancing a tango. There are certain cues you would give to your partner, and your partner knows how to respond to them. And so we asked ourselves, how should the brain encode this? How should the brain represent this? What sort of memories should you have in order to achieve this, this behavior, this kind of cooperation? And the first thing that you can guess is that you have to know your part. If you're going to dance a dance, you have to know your steps. So we assumed that the birds had to know their own part. And then we also knew that the birds and a person would have to know at least the cues from the other participant, from your partner dancing or from the other bird. And so we knew those two things would have to play out somehow in the brain. They've got to, because the animals do this in their behavior. When we looked in the brain, we found something completely surprising. Instead of finding the memory for the bird's own performance, the bird's own contribution to the cooperative duet song as being the strongest memory, we found that the strongest memory was actually of the combined performance that included not only its own performance, but the parts that were done by the other bird. And that's never really been described uh, in nature before in other animals. It means that the uh, animals have a representation, have an understanding of what the combined output of their behavior is that goes beyond just simply my contribution or its contribution to the behavior. That was pretty cool.